Hi, it's cushion day. I'm so excited to share this with you. I am covering cushions for my RV and I just love the way they're turning out. This is the finished one. This is the one I have yet to go. So I'm going to use this one to show you. And uh, just I have a few things to say before I even get started. One is that I have already made a cushion video and I had a pop-up tent trailer and I've had that for a few years and we glamped it and it just turned out amazing. It was so fun. And we've decided to get a little bit of a bigger trailer and it's a, called a hybrid. So it's kind of half pop-up tent trailer and half trailer. It doesn't pop up, but it does have the fold out beds. So I'm back to square one on glamping. And the first thing I did when I decided I was going to cover these cushions is I watched a video on how to cover cushions. And it was my video. <laughs> I know that's silly. I don't do this all the time. And that was like three years ago. So it was kind of cool because it made sense to me. Obviously I did it that way and I'm copying the exact same way again. I'm making a few changes because my cushions are a little bit different and I'm going to tell you those differences as we go. Um, well, I'll just tell you those differences right now. One, they're wider, bigger, and so I had to allow for more fabric and it, it didn't even fit. So I had to do a couple of different things in my measuring and, um, on my other pop-up tent trailer, the, the larger cushion on the bottom, I used one piece of fabric and I had one seam there and two seams there. These cu bottom cushions, this is the top, the bottom cushions were too big. So I had two pieces of fabric and I sewed three, four seams, seams all the way around. And um, the other thing that's different is this has a curve. It's kind of got a curve and a little bit of molding, but I'm just ignoring that. It's under here, but it's not really showing but the curve was a little bit to work around. And I'm gonna show you basically what that was like. And if you struggled with the curve, someone wrote to me on my last video that they had curved seats and I said, I don't know. And now I, it's a little harder. I will say that it was not that different. It was just different when I got to my bottom seam because it had a little more extra fabric on the sides because it's just a little smaller on the sides than it is in the center. That's really all the difference. I also took some notes so I wouldn't forget to tell you anything. I did measure my fabric to choose how much fabric I needed and I have a video on how to measure fabric for this and that was a good video. It really does work. That will tell you the difference for me now as opposed to when I made that video is I just use a one inch seam allowance on everything because it's easy math. I know that you know uh, it's five eighths inch seam when you're making a dress and it's something else when you're doing upholstery. I just use one inch. It's super close. And um, I marked one inch with a little bit of masking tape on my sewing machine. So I'm just using one inch. So when I have a need for a seam allowance, I'm just adding one. That's just something I'm doing. So I made a few steps and I'm going to post these on my blog. So if you just want to read this and not watch the video, that's fine. I'll try to put some pictures in with it, but they'll just be from the video. So watch the video. Uh, this has no zipper and no Velcro. There was a lot of discussion on my last video about you could put a zipper in, you could put Velcro in, and yes, you could, and you can. And either you can just figure out how to do that, or you can watch a different video on how to do that. I chose not to, and it's just a couple of reasons. It's just a preference. I just like that my cushions are just enclosed all the way. So I don't I don't want to mess with a zipper. That would have been a, a complication. I just didn't want to do a really long one or whatever. So this is hand sewn from there to there. And the um, Velcro would just stick up and I just, I just didn't want it. So I purposely did not put zipper or Velcro, but if you want to, I mean, yay, that's awesome. And it wouldn't be that hard. So you could do that. Let's just get started. Uh, it begins with step one. And step one is measure your cushions, add a seam allowance on all sides, all sides, and I use a one inch just to make it easy math. Step two is choose your fabric. I chose this. It's a decor fabric, thicker than regular fabric from Joann's. And um, I have a funny little story on my fabric. If you want to watch my video on choosing my colors, I talked about how I picked this and it was on clearance and that was kind of a fun. I have a lot of this. <laughs> you'll have to see in the video. There's a cute little story. Um, you'll need to know how wide your fabric is. My fabric would have been almost enough to just do one piece on my larger cushions, but it wasn't by one inch. So 
you just measure how wide your fabric is so you'll know how much you need to get and I do have a video on how to measure your cushions and the only change again I already said this but I would make it the change to one inch seam allowance because it's easy math step three is to cut the fabric now I'm gonna begin with my bottom and I'm gonna bring that in and start sewing I've already cut the fabric but for these smaller cushions, you're going to cut one piece and wrap it all the way around. So you'll have a seam here, a seam there, and a seam here. No seam on the top. Nice and pretty. On the bottom, um, if, you're, if your cushions are small enough, I would do the same thing. Just watch my other video. But on this one, my cushions were too big, and so I had to have seams all the way around. So there you go. Um, iron your fabric. There's, sometimes there's these little, um, you know, just it's folded on the bolt and it's 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 going to mess you up on your measurements if that fold comes. It's like a little wrinkles and creases. And this one's hard to get the creases out of, but once it's stretched out on the cushion, you're not going to see any wrinkles. I recommend that you do not wash this fabric because I think it has something in it, like a stabilizer of some sort, that gets washed out if you wash it nice and stiff. So the stiffer, the better. Uh, it's another reason why I don't remove the underneath cushion covers because that's just one more stiffness so underneath this cover is this and it's got a zipper and everything it's just underneath it so I don't know if I sold my camper later and they didn't like this they could just take it off and they would have this the original so there's a lot of reasons why I do it that way but the one reason is because it's nice and firm um the stiffer the better so we're on step four right now and I'm just going to start with my larger cushion and um, I'm going to sew my three sides together. But let me just show you a little bit about me cutting out that fabric and um, before I actually sew it. I have ironed both pieces of fabric and I will say these creases did not want to come out but I got them as, as ironed as I can and I have placed them right sides together and I'm going to sew all three sides leaving one side open and what I chose for the side that's going to be open that's the one I'm going to hand sew I used the end that was finished from the bolt so I cut it so this end is clean from the bolt no fraying does that make sense okay so I'm going to sew the long end first and then I'm going to sew the sides always starting at the seam I made so that I don't go that way and get a pucker and one of the things I will give you a tip right now that helped me is since I know I'm going to be starting at this seam once I make it I pinned my I'm going to pin my fabric so that I can picture myself sitting at the sewing machine but if I pin it right here then this side is so I flipped it over and pinned this side so now all I need to do is sew that seam sew that seam turn it over and sew that seam that's just going to make it easy, otherwise um, I would have to repin it so I could, otherwise the fabric needs to be out here, so can't fit in my sewing machine. You'll see. Trust me on that little tip. All right, I showed you how I pinned it. Now I'm going to sew it, and then we'll, we'll put it on and we'll do our corners, and then um, it's just going to go down really down really quickly from here. Well, until we get to the hand sewing part. That takes a little time. Okay, so... Now I have sewn all three sides to my cushion cover. It's time to try on. So it says here, sew the long side first and sew each side starting from the long side you just sewed. I showed you how to pin that. You need to flip it. Wow, that saved me a lot of time because I had to do that over the first time. That's why this second time goes so much faster. Now I'm going to try it on and I want to say just a tip here is to always use the zipper side of your cushion as the bottom. That way you always know what your bottom is. Plus I wouldn't want that bump on the top. Um, so let's just try this on the cushion. See if it fits, right? All right, here's my cushion and it has fabric on the top and this vinyl on the bottom. I'm leaving that on and I'm trying this on right sides in. So it's inside out even just so I can mark it for my corners. This is all I really want from this is to mark my corners. Here we go. There's one corner. We're going to fix that in a minute. If anything, this might be the hardest part is just putting this on and off. So do it as little as possible. Now, my cushion is, it does not have wood, so I can bend it and push it and get it 
in there. If it had wood, it's a little harder, but I did have wood on my other cushion covers. It's just it, it had less, no wood from here to here, so I was able to push. So I need to really wrangle this. It's not easy. Okay, this part's easier. What's harder when you start putting in this corner? But you only have to do that once. So, you know, just straighten it out, get it on. This is just to find that corner. That's a little wonky. Let's see if I can fix that from this side. And this side's good. So let's see if that fixes the other side. Uh, so sorry. Did I make you dizzy? Yeah, that fixed it. Okay. While this is on here, there's a couple of things you want to check, and I put this on my list. When it's on, ask yourself, is it snug enough? Do I need to take this seam up at all? Okay. And mine is snug enough, but if it was a, even the little bit, littlest bit of give, I think it's going to give even more once we start sitting on it. So I want it snug as possible right now. So if you need to, you could just move the seam over a little bit if you needed to. And now I have this floppy corner and I want a nice, nice even corner. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to mark this with my pen. Actually, I'm using a red pencil. And what I'm going to do... Can you see that? So I'm just going to draw a line straight across. I'm just going to draw a line and then I'm going to sew that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. This is not an exact science. If you are an exact person, you may not like this video. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right out. Okay. I am more interested in getting out and going camping than I am doing these cushions. But I'm excited to have them in my camper. Okay, that corner's marked. The next thing I need to do is I need to find out where this bottom seam is gonna be. It looks like I gave it a bigger seam allowance than I intended to, and I don't know why that happened, but it did. And this is what I have excess here. Instead of one inch, I've got almost three. I'm going to leave that there because I don't want the fraying edge and I want that, you know, it could just be there. So it's gonna be inside. But I do wanna find out where it should be. So I'm gonna pin it nice and snug. I'm gonna pin it and then I'll make a mark with my pencil. Okay, I'm going to just mark it right where my pen is on both sides because I don't know which side I, I want my mark on yet. So I marked my seam, and now that I know where my seam is, I can mark my corner. So I'm going to do that. Oopsie. Once I put this, take this off, I only want to put it back on one time. Mark my corner, fluff this fabric over, get it out of my way mark this corner. Okay, now I'm going to do the other end too. Now I, I could take this pin out because I've marked it, um, but I want to mark it right up. It gets a little loose right by this corner. I noticed on my first one, so I'm going to mark that one too because it's, it's possible that it was because I was thinking about the curvy one where I had extra fabric because of that curve but just in case I'm marking it. So basically I've just come down about that far and I marked my seam line. I'm not marking the whole thing. I wanted to show you before I did this last two corners um, that I did a little tiny bit of the seam because this is important. If I didn't, I wouldn't know how to get that corner because I'm gonna hand sew this seam. Um, I just have a little bit on each end just so I can get my nice little corner. So I marked it. And now I'm going to find my corner. So this is my new seam. Uh, it's going to be hand stitched the rest of the way, but right now I need I, I need to find my corner. So here it is, seam, seam. So I'm just going to pull it like as if it was on the pillow, right? Okay. So I'm just going to pull it as if it was on the cushion. And there's my there's my corner. Remember I marked it. So there you go. Just to make it easy, I'm going to pin it. And I'll do the other side, then I'm going to sew it. But I'm not going to 
sew it straight across because I have this excess fabric, which is because um, just the way it ended up extra. So I'm going to sew to there and I'm going to sew to there and I'm not going to cut this off just yet. You just don't know if I might need it when I'm doing my cushion, when I'm doing my hand sewn seam. I'm leaving it there. You can cut it off if you want to. I hate cutting off. Never know what's going to happen. Again, sewed my little seam. So pretending this is on my cushion, I'm just going to grab it and pull it out and find my corner that I marked. There it is. There it is. Like magic. Okay, I found my corner. I'm going to mark it with a pen and I will be right back with my corner and then we're going to put this sucker on and sew her up and be done with it and we'll do the other the top okay this is actually like the hardest part of this whole project so i'm just going to get these two corners in i'm not going to try and do this part yet because it's hard to get into that opening so there's one corner my zipper's down here just double checking so right now is the hardest part and i have found that if I can fold this in half by pushing really hard, that I can get it in there like a taco. See? You see it's folded in half? I don't know if yours will do that, but this is the only way I got this on here. I told you it was the hardest part. on and it is snug which is what I wanted oops sorry I banged into you okay I feel good about this little corner here and this little corner here so basically now I need to deal with this opening okay so here's what I'm gonna say about that on my first one I ironed it and made a crease but I have to tell you that that seam did not end up matching what I ended up doing okay here's a tag that's just on the cushion I'm going to tuck that in so basically how can I do this so you can see basically I just I'm going to take this and I'm just going to fold it under much as I can and then I'm going to start finding a seam where I want it okay so it's folded in fold it in down here flatten it out a little okay now I've got it all flat and now I want to figure out I don't want it to be so tight that it just doesn't work. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm just going to find a spot that's not too hard to get to. Right there. This is just going to be a holder. Hold that spot. Okay. So now I'm going to sew this together. Maybe I'll make another holder spot. You know what it's like? It's like when you're trying to zip up a zipper and if someone would just hold it shut, you could go right up with it. That's kind of how I feel like what I'm doing right now. I'm just finding my spot to hold it. When I get to it, I'll take the pin out. Okay, so I've kind of loosely pinned my seam up. This just actually looks a little uneven. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to start sewing this. And for that you'll need a needle, needle and thread. 
thread. There's my needle. Now I'm going to use something called an invisible stitch and I'm doubling up my thread and I'm going to put a link to a video where this person who's super good at this shows you how to do this stitch and I copied her and she sewed up a pillow, an edge of a pillow. So this is very much a big pillow is what this is. So I'm just copying her and I'm gonna want you to see that video if you wanna do this stitch. Um, she hides her knot by putting it inside and I'm gonna do that first. Okay, there's my knot. And now I'm gonna start my stitch. And this will make sense to you if you watch her video. I'm just going to do a few and then I will finish it up off camera. But I wanted to show you what this looks like because it's super cool. So cool. I think she calls it the invisible stitch or the ladder stitch. Okay. I don't know if I can show this to you. But can you see right here how it looks like a little ladder? Now watch this. If I... I sewed them this way, back and forth. If I just pull it, look at that, it just disappears. So I'm gonna do that through this whole cushion and I'll show you when it's done. And then I'm gonna go right onto my um, top cushion. I lied, I wanna show you one more trick. So I'm just sitting at my table and I want this like right in front of me. I don't wanna crack my neck, I don't wanna down below, I don't wanna bend over. I figured out that I just set a pillow underneath it to lift it up and I keep bonking you, I'm sorry. And it's right in front of me. So now I can just do my sewing right here without bending over. Isn't that clever? Now I'm doing the top cushion. I have followed the same instructions. Basically, I measured it, I cut my fabric, I ironed it, and I'm ready to sew. And the thing that's different now is um, I'm only sewing one piece of fabric. I'm not sewing two. I basically made it long enough to roll around. So there won't be a seam on the top because this will fit. And the other one was too big to do that. Otherwise, I would have done that too on the bottom. Now. I'm going, to, I'm going to use the fold as the top where I had a seam before. Now I just have the top and there is no seam, it's just a fold. And I'm gonna be sewing down the sides on both sides. I pinned this side and it's gonna go in my machine this way. So I need to flip this over so it can also go in my machine this way. It's just a little tip that will save you a little bit of effort. And once I pin it, I'm going to sew down my side seams. And at that point, I'm gonna put it on the cushion, measure my corners just like I did before. Sew a little bit of my, a little bit of the seam here, make this corner, rustle it onto the cushion, and then sew up the edges. And I'm gonna show you when I get to the part where I'm, um, measuring the seam because it was a little different because of that curve. So let me get to that point and I'll show you how it's different on this cushion. Otherwise, it's the same as the other one. Okay, so I'm on the bottom of the top cushion, which is the hand sewn seam. So I've done this little tiny seam and I just wanted to show it to you because it's because it's curved, it almost looks like my seam is kind of at an angle. Does that make sense? So you can see it. It's kind of it's, it's kind of going this way instead of going straight because it's smaller on the end and bigger in the middle. And um, I just kind of wanted to point that out. Also, I said I might not trim this, but I am, I'm gonna trim this excess so I don't have to deal with that when I'm dealing with my corner. Excuse my dog's barking. Dad just got home. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on the other side and then do my corner and then I'm putting it on. Corners are done. Got my zipper end. Turn it right side out and I'm ready to go. part. Remember how I had to really push that cushion down, that other one? This one might be a little easier, but it's still going to be hard. It wasn't as hard. I 
Okay, so now I just need to sew this seam up and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to use this invisible stitch. I'm going to hand sew this whole thing. And that's it. Last one's done. I am so excited to put these in my trailer and I'm excited to show you. So some other projects I have, I'm going to be also putting the same fabric on the jackknife sofa and that's going to be interesting. I did some molding, some fabric covered molding. We painted. I'm going to be putting all of those out. If you're interested in following our journey, please click subscribe and the little bell and um, check back to see what's next. Mm -hmm.